Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to this tutorial on, uh, yeah, how to set up a Photoshop grid. So uh, this is tutorial number five in my build a website from start to finish series. And if you uh, jump over to Asana, you can see I've ticked off the previous two tasks uh, that we took care of uh, in the previous videos, doing research and uh, researching current design trends. So now let's move on to uh, this one uh, and create our Photoshop grid. So I'm gonna jump over to Photoshop and you can see that this is pretty much what I'd like to have done by the end of this video. I'd like to have a Photoshop uh, grid set up for a desktop size screen and then another one set up for a mobile phone screen and I am gonna be doing this using artboards. And yeah, uh, artboards are a relatively new feature in Photoshop. So if you are going around downloading uh, grids from uh, other websites, you're probably not going to be able to have this feature available where you have your desktop and your mobile phone screen exactly uh, next to each other or right next to each other so you can compare designs. Um, so yeah, Artboards is, a, again, like I said, it's a relatively new feature. It hasn't been around all that long. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up a grid with these two in the same Photoshop file. I think previously uh, what people would have to do is they'd set up um, uh, grids uh, in multiple files. So uh, one for one screen size, one for another screen size, and one for the other screen size. And essentially you'd have to have uh, more than one Photoshop file open at a time and you'd have to view and compare uh, grids uh, in such a way that uh, they were always um, in a different file. Whereas here we're gonna be using artboards next to each other. So before we actually jump into creating our artboards, I do want to give you guys a little bit more background information. Uh, for those of you guys who uh, don't have Photoshop or for some reason cannot afford Photoshop, uh, you guys can also use a free alternative which is called Photopia. Uh, and Photopia is a browser-based alternative. Um, and it does pretty much everything Photoshop can do. So uh, it can actually open up Photoshop files. So if you hit file and open, uh, you can actually open up a Photoshop file. So I think I have one um, under tutorials and build a website from start to finish and mock designs. I actually have a uh, Photoshop design that I have set up previously and yeah, um, Photopia opens this up perfectly fine. You can see we've got the grid here in front of us and uh, we're able to view and edit anything we want. Um, the only disappointing part about this is that there are certain things about Photopia that, um, you know, Photoshop has perfected and Photopia doesn't have that quite there yet. So if I hit view uh, and guides, I can hide and show guides, but I have to do it this way around. Whereas uh, if I go back over to Photoshop, I can do it with a keyboard shortcut, which is just command and semicolon, and that will hide and show uh, the guides. So um, they are not in my way. Okay, so now that we've got uh, that information out of the way, uh, I also just wanna mention to you that you can download a UI kit grid at any point in time. So if you uh, go over to Google and Google UI kit uh, grid for Photoshop, um, you'll see the first link available here goes to Behance. And uh, yeah, it's got a little download link to download some PSDs, which uh, I already have downloaded. And in fact, um, I've already opened them up in Photoshop as well. It's these, uh, these two grids here. So yeah. For some reason, uh, when people do designs, they like to put little background colors, uh, background stripes in there. I am not really a fan of that. So I prefer to just add in the grids and then uh, leave my background white. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to set this up now. So let's hit file and new with Photoshop open. And of course that is going to take us to this new document window. And I'm gonna go over to the web tab. Um, and uh, from here I can choose a bunch of standard um, sizes that have already been set up uh, by Photoshop. You can see that we've got uh, web most common. So the reason why this one is the most common is because pretty much every single cheap Windows laptop uses 30, 1366 pixels uh, or a screen that is 1366 pixels uh, in width. So anything that is like fairly cheap and affordable is probably gonna be using this size and that's why it's the most common because most people will buy the cheaper stuff. Um, and then web large is uh, 
1920 by 1080 so we know that this is pretty much the standard size of any desktop screen i don't think there's even desktop screens that are sold that are smaller than this resolution at the moment if there are like honestly i think just really really poor people are buying them or companies that are trying to save a lot of money but for the most part um yeah we're all using 1920 by 1080 i'm sure at least uh and then We've got web medium. So web medium is more the size of uh, my Macintosh screen. So my Mac is a 15 inch Mac. And yeah, my screen is pretty much this size, uh, except for the fact that I do have a retina dis display. So actually every one pixel is two pixels, which means my screen is double the size of this. But hey, um, <laughs> yeah, um, this is pretty much what my, my screen gets rendered out to be. Uh, so I'm going to be choosing the web medium uh, function over here or web medium uh, template. And that's because you don't really have to worry about the difference too much between web most common and web medium. They're pretty much the same thing, but I think I'm just going to uh, uh, design for my screen at the moment. Uh, and then before you actually uh, click create, make sure that you've got this artboards uh, checkbox selected because if the artboards checkbox is not selected you're not going to be able to create artboards so that's super 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 important and uh, yeah i've got a feeling that maybe somebody's going to forget to tick this box and leave a comment below i'm very afraid of that but uh, i have stressed enough so just go ahead and tick that box and hit create and now we have uh, our first artboard set up and this is 1440 pixels in width so uh, now I can go ahead and create my grid. So let's hit view uh, and new guide layout. And uh, yeah, uh, what I'd like to do here is have 10 columns. And the reason why I want to use 10 columns is because if I go over to UIKit's website, which is the front end framework we're going to be using for this uh, website or for our design, um, you can see that the maximum amount of columns that it actually has here is 10 columns. So if you're used to Bootstrap or if you're used to another front end framework, a lot of these front end frameworks uh, have 12 columns, but UIKit has 10. That is a very big difference between UIKit and the others. Uh, so yeah, just make sure that. Um, when you're setting this up in Photoshop, we're using 10 columns, not 12. Okay, gutter is gonna be 30 pixels. And then we're going to need to add in some left and right margin. And the reason why we're gonna to have to do that is because, uh, yeah, basically right now our columns are reaching all the way to the edge of my canvas. And of course, I don't really want that to happen because, um, yeah, uh, again, I can go over to UIKit's website and if you take a look at the customizer and if you wait for everything to load, you can see that it gives you some container max width sizes. And um, yeah, these are changeable, but I think the default is going to be 1,200 pixels. And I'm just gonna go ahead and keep that default, which means that, uh, yeah, the largest my website can actually be is 1,200 pixels. And then I want to have a container that is gonna be centered in the middle of the screen. So uh, let's go over to my calculator and we need to calculate our um, margins here basically. So uh, if I say uh, 1440, which is the current size of my canvas now, and I minus 1200 pixels, which is the largest our container can possibly be, I get 240, right? So what I could do at this point is set a right margin of 240 pixels and that's gonna put everything or all the margin on the right, meaning that this is now going to be the size of our container uh, where everything is pressed up against the left. Of course, I don't want that to happen. Um, so I'm gonna divide that 240 by two and I think my math is solid enough to know that that's going to be 120 by 120 uh, on the left and the right. Uh, and so now we've got the margin here and a margin here, and we've basically got our container. Um, if I drag out a uh, rectangle shape tool here, uh, basically I can have my, contain uh, my container uh, over here in the middle of the screen. So that would be the size of our container. 
right? Uh, so now that we've got that one set up, let's take a look at creating our second artboard for a mobile phone. So I'm gonna go over to the top of uh, my Photoshop file here and what is normally the move tool uh, can actually also be changed into an artboard tool, but only if you remember to check uh, tick the, the artboards button when you set this up, right? Uh, and now I can create a new artboard over here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and drag and drop any size. Uh, and from here, I can now go over to the um, edit bar at the top here and I can choose a preset. So I can choose iPhone 6 as a preset. And you can see that, wow, it has made a really big iPhone screen size. Uh, so in comparison, I mean, this is a computer desktop. This is an iPhone size. I don't know what Photoshop was thinking. Actually, I do know what Photoshop was thinking. Uh, they've basically accounted for the fact that an iPhone, uh, this phone has a retina display. And because it has a retina display, wherever there are, would normally be one pixel, there's actually four pixels. So uh, we kind of just need to half all of these uh, pixels or pixel amounts. Um, so instead of being 750, this needs to be 375. And instead of being 136, this needs to be 667. Um, and that is pretty much our iPhone screen size. That's actually what it turns out to be. And uh, there is a way for you guys to double check this, by the way. Uh, so if you go over to your browser and you type in, what is my browser size? You can also Google this on your phone, open up one of the websites, uh, and it'll pretty much tell you what your uh, screen size is. Uh, so you can see right now, uh, my browser size is 1440 in width by 799 in height. And the reason why I think it's accounting for a lower height is just uh, the fact that my browser only starts here. And so it's it's, taking all of this stuff out of account. Also, if I made my browser smaller, hmm, do you think I can actually do this? Yeah, you see the number goes down, right? So uh, yeah, the height isn't really important. It's the width that is very important. Um, and uh, yeah, let's jump back over to Photoshop. And uh, yeah, you can see that now I've got my iPhone grid set up there. Uh, and what I'd like to do is uh, say view, Okay, with the Artboard 2 or uh, iPhone, we can actually rename this to iPhone and uh, Mac. Uh, we can rename my screen sizes, but with my iPhone uh, Artboard selected, let's hit View, uh, New Guide Layout, and we're gonna do the same thing. 10 columns uh, with a gutter of 30 pixels, but instead of having a left margin, we're going to have that set to zero pixels. And instead of having a right margin, we're going to set that to zero pixels. And I now have my iPhone uh, grid set up perfectly fine. And so there we go. I now have the grid created for both my Mac and my iPhone. And I think what I'm going to do is make these available for download on Patreon. So if you guys uh, like my videos and you like what you learn in my videos, you can go ahead and check out my Patreon page. And I think I'm going to end this video off here. But before I do, I just want to send a huge shout out to my current patrons who pledge $5 or more every single month on Patreon. And that goes a long way to helping me make more videos for you guys more often. So if you like what you learn here and you want to help me make more, uh, check out my Patreon or Patreon page. So don't forget to subscribe. Please feel free to leave a like, comment, and share this video because that's gonna help my channel grow. And I'll see you guys in the next one.